We've got another big rumor for you on Locked On Cubs. Plus, the Cubs make a signing, and it's Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? Go Cubby. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Best way to support the show is by listening or watching every day on your preferred audio platform or YouTube. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Today's Wednesday episode is presented by FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. This is the final episode of the week before we return early next week here on the show through the Thanksgiving holiday. At the end of Tuesday's episode, we did tease about Uh, The lead for today being why should Shohei Otani pick the Cubs over the Dodgers? And we're going to hold off on that until early next week, either Monday or Tuesday. Uh, The reason why is because there's news. There is news in Cubs land, just like we said at the end of Tuesday's show. And Sam, that is about Bo Bichette. Happy Thanksgiving and excited to talk Cubs one more time before the break. Yeah, I love like, you know, you are locked on Cubs, if we could get back to that. Um, but, you know, just something I just wanted to – and to everybody out there wondering, this is a zero, so don't worry about my sugar intake with the Gatorade. Um, yeah, listen, I'm very, I, I'd am very. i like you to kick off the Bo Bichette stuff because I think okay. you got a little bit more than me, and then I'll give you what I think, and then that's usually how we do it on this show. All right, let me put this up on the screen because we are reporting this – as a show, the Cubs have talked to the Blue Jays oh, this offseason about Bo Bichette, who would play third base on the north side. Uh, this was hinted at earlier this week, as I attribute a couple earlier reports, including John Morosi, who did mention the Cubs' interest in Bichette last December. Uh, this was following the Swanson signing. And uh, Bichette is signed through 2025 and would cost a big return. So there's a lot to get to here. Uh, the Cubs have an opening at third base. They don't need a shortstop. That's where Bichette plays right now. But he's an elite player. He's plus offensively, uh, plus runner, plus defensively. Of course, the acquisition cost would be high, but it would be a huge acquisition for the Cubs, who seem to be swirling in all the water so far. Yeah, I think this is this is a really tricky one for me to break down because from a Cubs perspective, it makes all the sense in the world. Uh, for, for those people that aren't familiar with Bo Bichette's game, this is a star player on the offensive side of the ball. He hits 300 every season. He's among the league leaders in hits every season. He's a pure hitter. What I mean by that, OPS isn't a huge thing with him. On base percentages, it's batting average. He gets yeah. hits. He's one of those guys. Think th- the best way I could – Describe Bo Bichette in a Cubs lens is think what we all want Nico Horner to become. A a 300 type hitter with enough power where it's acceptable, 20 to 25 home runs, very clutch, can hit any type of pitching, just a, a stud offensive player. Signed through 2025 on a very manageable arbitration avoidable contract that they agreed to, I believe, last offseason. Mm-hmm. Um, haven't really seen him play much third base, but his bat is so great and he plays short. You got to think that it would would go over there. From a Cubs perspective, it, it, it's another option to go for if they strike out, I don't know, Tani or a Soto. Just for, for people's perspective, I would have this way ahead of Pete Alonso. Uh, th- this acquisition would wow. make the Cubs much better than Pete Alonso would. My issue with this is I don't understand why the Blue Jays would do it. So I, I do have, I have to admit that. I, I've heard some buzz, as you have, I in, from, from our sources as well. It's it's very real that the Cubs have interest. It's just, I, I don't understand from a Blue Jays perspective. You're in a window yourself. You have a player in your prime signed for two more years at a massive bargain. 
why are you trading him in the middle of a time where you're trying to win a world championship? So it gets to the return, right? You would have to part ways with somebody you absolutely love. PCA at least, Cade Horton probably. Maybe it's somebody even on the roster that you really like. Yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, you know, I, I know Hap and Suzuki, like maybe Nico Horner's part of that deal. I have no idea. Um Yeah, it would be a massive cost. Yeah, it would be it would be a, a bigger cost probably even than Soto because of the extra year of control and how little he's owed. I mean, you're getting a a perennial all-star type talent for you know, hand to mouth money, basically in, right. in, in big league terms. And you'd be filling a huge need. And I'll, I'll go as far as to say this with, with Bichette. Now, listen, we're not the type of show. We're not just coming out here and spitting off stuff to spit off stuff. This is real stuff. So I give yeah. my takes on it. Um, if they just re-signed Bellinger and traded for Bichette, the offensive offseason would be complete. That's be huge. The, and I know he's not a power bat, but you, you add an, you add Bichette Swan to, to Swanson, Horner, Hap, Suzuki, Bellinger, you know, like Bichette, he's a, a you could hit him first, second, third, or fourth. Be massive. Like, yeah, he's a he's a stud hitter. I mean, he's a stud hitter. Right. No, I, I like I like what you're dishing out. I think in terms of the treasure hunt part of it on the Blue Jays side, I do find the Morosi report from eleven months ago uh very unique. That that the murmurs officially go back that far for whatever reason. And the plausibility on the side of the Blue Jays is confusing, but they haven't contended at the level they have wanted to. And the likelihood of keeping him after 2025 is, is low because he is a stud player, like you say. So his market is going to be massive. Um, when you project him in, in the Cubs lineup as it currently is structured, it, it gets better. When you project him in the lineup with Bellinger or Otani, it becomes really exciting. Well, and so I want to echo and expand on that part of it because, um, you know, this is the trade side. This would be a trade in addition to <laughs> well, a signing, right? If they um, add Boche if they add Otani and Bachet. I, you know, I may, I may have to take a sabbatical. To it. Well, I sketched out a lineup with those two guys last night. I don't well, have the you're, graphic ready. Well, but. you're talking. So, so from an offensive standpoint, now you're talking about a, a sabbatical. Team. Well, no, no. Now you're talking about a team that's the the best offense in the major leagues. So, so no. Bichette no Toddy would be the best offense in the league. Yes. Wow. Yes. No, the main the sport, not just the National League, the world. Wow. Look, now that's exciting here on a holiday week. You guys know I keep it real. But the Cubs have the system and the money to do it. They do. And I I know that, oh, well, why would you trade PCA? Listen, it's going to take PCA. It's going to take Morrell. Might take a major league or even more established. Plus three or four high-level guys. But that is the price to pay. But But – projecting him with the Cubs, it's so easy to see that. So for you to say that they would get to that type of level, I think I can appreciate that excitement. And just the fact that it is something that's happening as, as we're reporting here, um, I do like that. We had a lot of conversations last December, Sam. Remember there was the 7- to 10-day window where it was like, what are the Cubs doing? And I think we've we have learned from that. You know, especially given, let's say, the council news. We don't have to get updated on everything. We don't have to – no. the timeline doesn't have to be as clear all the time. I think last off season, the only thing we really had and felt good about is I think about 10 days before it happened, I reported that Swanson was going to be probably coming here, if you remember that. Yeah, Maybe but there was, was just such a big delay. Right, right. But everything right. else came out of nowhere. So, right, you know. It was um, – and Bellinger, we had a little bit of an inkling on that. But, right. um, yeah, no, it's – I have no idea what's going to happen. But I just – you know, I think when you and I both hear the same thing, that's kind of when it's time to probably talk about it. Um, this is – this is – And Theo and Jed started the holiday deals with Schilling. This – 20 years ago with the Red Sox. So these guys, they could do something on Thursday. They could. This – And if they do, I'm leaving. Wherever I am. Well, because because the dream, the dream has always been Otani. 
the, the dream has always been from an offensive standpoint. I would like to talk pitching just for a second before we get into, Oh, well, maybe I'll save that for when we get into our guy that we sign. Okay. But the dream has always been Otani and then somebody else, obviously Otani being the dream and you can't, you can't afford Otani and Soto. So that's not possible. Right. right? And they, and they're basically the same type of position outfield DH. If Correct. you're a, if you were able to get Otani and then fill third with this budding superstar, man, let me read you the numbers. Yeah, please. Rookie, rookie year, limited time, 311. <laughs> limited time in 2020, 301. Full campaign in 2021, 298. Lead the league in hits, 29 homers, 102 ribby. 29 homers. I didn't even realize he hit that many. Wow. Then a full season in 2022, led the league in hits, 290, 24 home run. Last season, 135 games. So same as Otani, missed. Missed a portion, hit 306 with 20 home runs. He's a 299 career hitter. Has never hit below 290 in his five major league seasons. <laughs> That's pretty good. The exact type of guy you're looking for. Hits good pitching. It's incredibly exciting. And uh, you know, to my point from a minute or two ago, I don't know how point. much I put it in, like, oh, well, I'm glad Jed's making the effort. But I know no. last offseason, we did have a hard stance on that. Even in that 7-10-day yeah. to 10, 10 day buffer, it was like, okay, we could talk about it. We could appreciate the effort, but you got to get it done, right? Are you still of that position? Of Not course. necessarily on Bichette, just but in general. Yeah, he has to do something this offseason that makes our team completely better. I'm just sorry. I'm just looking at a, a couple more stats from Bichette. Um, in his career, <laughs> in his career, with runners in scoring position, he's hitting 312. <laughs> that's yeah, so, that's a lead. So if they added him and Otani, they're going to be a 100 win team. <laughs> that's good. No, I'm not. You should joking. tweet that tonight. I mean, it's not really going out of the limb, but I think that would get the people going. Yeah, of course. I'm in the same stance. Get it done, man. You don't okay. get points. I, I mean, All I. All right. All right. I, big I, dog. I, I probably could work really hard tonight and call everybody I know and find a way to get a hold of Bo Bichette and ask him to come here. What does that do? He's got to come. Right, right, absolutely. The Cubs did make one signing already, reportedly, and it was out of Japan. We get to that next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. This Thursday, Sam, I have my eyes locked in on Lions Packers, 11.35 a.m. Central kickoff. Uh, the Lions are heavy favorites in that one. And uh, the Cowboys, heavy favorites for the middle game as well for the Commanders. Uh, so some some football, some turkey on Thanksgiving. Keep keep an eye on that. FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel, official partner of the LockedOn Podcast Network. The Cubs are reportedly signing left-handed relief pitcher Edwin Escobar. Escobar last pitched in the big leagues in 2016, but has pitched and pitched well in Japan for the past seven seasons. In 2023, he posted a 3.33 ERA with 46 strikeouts in 51 innings, has a low arm slot, has an odd delivery, and he was teammates with fellow free agent Shota Imanaga, who is a left-handed starter and someone the Cubs are connected to this offseason. Sam, thoughts on Escobar? The signing has not been confirmed, but it looks like it's trending that way. Yeah, I think it's one of those things we need to, like I, I tweeted this out as well yesterday. Like, Cubs need a lefty. He's had success. Let's let it play out. It's not like, let's not overdo right. this. Like, there are some people who are like, absolutely hate it. What? Wait, I don't. No, no. How could you hate this? Yeah, yeah. Just, they, they need a lefty. It's probably he, a million or two dollars. Like, they. They need a lefty. He's an interesting one. I, I think this could be a council influence type of deal. This is a margin. This No, this, seriously, this is a margins acquisition. Absolutely. 
So, you know, they're going to take a lefty. They need one that, that could actually perform, unlike, you know, Hughes last year. That can actually uh, pitch. Yeah, and he's he's been trending in a good direction overseas. Like you said, low arm slot, not a ton of swing and miss, but uh, pretty weak right. contact. I like it. Guy that comes in, sixth inning, seventh inning of a tight game, you're facing Philadelphia, right? Leading off is Schwarber. Then it's Trey Turner. Then it's Bryce Harper. So two of those three is our lefties. You need a lefty to start that inning. He retires those guys, and he, he, you send him on his way. Um, I love you know, it. No, I mean, it's a, it's a fine there acquisition. There is momentum happening here. I don't, I don't, there's really not like, I'm not like taking a deep dive on this. Was it a mistake? Did I mean, it, it's, it's such a low, it's such a low. Well, risk people thing. must be bored. Who, and, and, whoever's and, doing that is bored. And how do you pronounce the name of the free agent lefty that he's teammates with? I, I, Imanaga. Yeah. And Imanaga is a real, that guy. I know, I know it's a little, he's diet, a real pitcher. I know it's a little diet soda because of, of Yamamoto, but if they add a guy like that, you know, he's, you know, he's a top three rotation guy, and maybe that helps them. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, he would be a three. He'd be a you know, but a solid three. Yeah. And another lefty to a, you know, to a rotation that only has one, which is, you know, uh Mississippi Steel. Right. Absolutely. And so, you know, happy I, I with it. Fine. Uh, yeah, it. it's a good early ad for the pen, which really only has, in my mind, uh, to be a little bit aggressive on this. Three main returning bullpen pieces, and I'm not going to apologize. Lighter, Merriweather, and Alzali. I'm not sure Lighter will be back. Okay, and so then there would only be two. Um, you 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 need you need eight people in the pen. Eight. Well, I, well yeah, I think Quas is going to be back. <laughs> I think Quas is going to be back, and I also think that. Um, so, uh, Smiley's going to pitch out of the pen. So there's an Ah, one. that's right. You're right. And All right, then, fine. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not trying to correct. I'm just saying. Uh, like, Smiley, a, Lighter, yeah. Merriweather, Alzali. Yeah. And I don't think Lighter will be back. I'll say that right now. So they're going to trade him. Yeah. Because well, they had an opportunity to non-tender him last week. They didn't do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then maybe he will be or you know, he could get sent down or something. <laughs> okay. Well, he does. Well, I, just, I believe listen, he does have options left. He I might. was I was all on the lighter <laughs> train, um, and then he forgot how to throw a splitter, and that's his only good pitch. So right, so the ball was pretty much on a tee. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, you're right. But with the bullpen acquisitions, Matt, these are the type of things. It's not going to be sexy, exciting stuff. It's going to be, you know, that's hey, fine. Who is this guy? They'll deliver if the Cubs are doing things right. They'll get the best out of these gentlemen. Well, and I, I sort of chuckled when he brought up Council again this episode, but yeah. but I, I think you're right. When no. they sign Escobar, when they sign, uh, you know, maybe another position player, when they sign bullpen pieces, I, I do think he has influence over it that. It doesn't – let me tell you something. Remember, he was almost the Brewers' GM before he was the manager. It doesn't take anybody smart to identify that Shohei Otani and Bo Bichette are good fits on the Cubs. Anybody could figure that out. It's the Edwin Escobars of the world. It's the pitchers. It's those guys. Those are the those are the ones where you get paid a lot of money to say, "Hey, see that guy? Hey, Jets, Craig. That you know that guy Escobar from Japan? Um, you know wherever he's not from Japan, but he pitches in Japan. Right, yeah, I, 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 I've been watching a lot of tape on him. He's got this this arm slot I really like, and he does some of the sinker. I could turn him into a a a below three reliever, and I'm going to use him the right way. Get me him. I'll talk to you. Have a nice Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm really upset, by the way, because for the Otani bit today, I had something planned. I was gonna, I was gonna talk to him. So, so right. early next. Oh, we'll early, do that Tuesday. No, I know, and I, you know, I really practiced what I was gonna say. So, oh, nice, nice. You're, yeah. you're actually gonna have a conversation with him. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be like a press conference bit, but it's just gonna be me oh, and wow. Shohei. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we look tra- forward to that. And his translator. Coming up next, we end off with some power rankings. Not baseball, though. Thanksgiving food. Stay tuned. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today covers the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Search Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. To close out this Wednesday episode and our last episode of the week pending breaking news of course uh, we're going to do some thanksgiving food power rankings i have my top three in front of me sam 
And uh, what are your what are your plans this week? Anything? Or- yeah, I'm going to I'm going to Anthony's parents' house with my dad. I I've never usually I do just Thanksgiving pretty much with my dad, so I don't really have like a ton of Thanksgiving traditions. Um, I'm yeah. not a I don't like what is you, you're doing a power ranking. What is considered Thanksgiving food? Like for sure. me, I don't really like turkey very much. I think it's a yeah. Very, I think that's trendy right now to diss uh, turkey a bit. Well, no, I, I don't. You, you. How long have you known me? I don't care what's trendy. I've been dissing turkey since I was three. I just don't like it. <laughs> it's nothing to do with what's trendy. It doesn't uh, taste good to me. No, I'm just. I'm not addressing you. I'm saying <laughs> that you know turkey is is, is taking you know, a back seat. I didn't read Twitter and then come on and say I don't like turkey. I like <laughs> stuffing fine. I like mashed potatoes fine. What else is there? What else is considered Thanksgiving food? I okay, I'm not let's quite go over sure. them. Yeah. Okay. You green tell me. Green bean See, casserole. Green bean casserole. Okay. That I like green beans. The the like the um the the sweet potato casserole. That has yeah. The yeah. I like that. And all that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I okay. Like that. A yeah. cranberry sauce. No. No. Cream corn. What? Uh, cream corn is Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. What? Ma- macaroni and cheese. Okay. Is that considered a Thanksgiving uh, food? A little. It, it's it's lower. Okay. I believe you mentioned stuffing already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, with my family, we have a some Italian food. Otherwise, the mob comes out. Well, well, well easy. Okay. We don't, and, we don't, uh, hey, hey, let me tell you something. You don't know. Also, who's your to this your show. your your variety of pies. Right. Okay. So, and I'm also going to an Italian home, so I'm interested oh, yeah. to see what what that tradition's like. And I've never left, um, you know, Anthony's parents' house not uh, satisfied with the food there. Right. Um. No, the pies. Yeah. Um. Pumpkins fine. Yeah. Um, pumpkins out for me. I like apple. Apple's great. Is that a Thanksgiving thing? Yeah, I think so. I like. I I identify apple pie more July Fourth. Peca- oh yeah, you're right. Pecan's Pecan. out for me. Yeah, I don't. I Key guess key lime just, is out. You know, I guess. Ugh, I cherry guess, is out. I like cherry pie, but I guess this is just more. I actually really like Thanksgiving, and I take time on Thanksgiving to really, you know, reach out and do all those things. But really, food wise, oh, I've always just kind of considered it, you know, an overrated holiday. Oh, so you consider it overrated? Food wise. Oh wow, interesting. I I don't think that way at all. I disagree. Like, like I like July Fourth, like barbecuing and burgers and hot dogs, hot dogs and things like that. Of course, you know there's a variety of Jewish holidays out there, but we're not really known for our cooking. Um, so those usually aren't <laughs> great. I've al- I've also I've also go gone to Anthony's parents for Christmas, and they do a great spread that day. A that's, ham. That's Christmas mu- ham. No, it's more Italian. It's like ravioli and oh, things like that. Oh, I gotta stop by there. <laughs> so that's much more of a. You know, that's more up my alley than, you know, turkey and cream corn. You know what I mean? I don't... Well, what is your stance on gravy? <laughs> I like mashed potatoes, but I, I, I put well, gravy on them. What's my stance on gravy? Well, yeah, I, think, I, I put I think, it on I think, stuff. I think the turkey would be helped with gravy. Well, of course. Well, if I, if I, I think they only serve turkey without gravy at prisons. I, I mean, well, of course I, I put gravy on the turkey. <laughs> Some people don't. Oh, it's a little odd. I mean, it's already a pretty naturally dry meat. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent it is. So I, it needs gravy. I didn't know that you were a big Thanksgiving. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, Matt. I've known you now a pretty long time. I really don't identify you with eating very much. Like, I just right, don't, right. I don't think about you with food a lot. Like, you're not. You know, Saturday night was probably the most I've ever seen you eat. <laughs> so, uh, and by the way, I'm still not. All, all the way better from that. But, oh, I know. Uh, I'm still kind of tired from all that meat. So. All right. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that was good. Uh, and We um, will be back on Monday and uh, pending breaking news. We'll, we'll be near our devices. Maybe I'll yeah, maybe I'll do a, a breaking Bo Bichette trade and I'll be live with some cream corn. <laughs> be phenomenal. <laughs> I don't never really <laughs> don't know what that is. I can't really even explain it. I think it'd be too almost like too crap. I like I love corn on the cob. Is that Thanksgiving? Right. I don't think so. 
I think that'd be more of like Fourth of July. What is Thanksgiving food? Comment below and Thank have a great day. Thank you so day. much for checking out this edition. And I'm grateful and Cubs. thankful for Speaking every single listener we have, all the everydayers. A hundred percent. We wouldn't be here without them. And uh, thank you for listening to this program. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. We'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube as we make the push. Maybe before we talk to you next to 7,000 subs, smash the like button for the algorithm. Shout out to the audio peeps in your ears on Apple, Spotify, Sirius XM, and more. And shout out for, to the St. Louis Cardinals for punting on 2024 already. He's Sam Olver. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Lockdown Cubs. There is momentum happening here.